Okay, welcome back everybody. So now we're gonna look at some subtraction problems. But first, what do we need to know before we tackle subtraction? Well, first things first, we need to understand our place value chart and the way that we use that to help with our columns. So just like before, we have our ones, tens, hundreds, and whatever else we get that side. And now we also know that we might get decimals coming this way, down our place value chart, smaller values. But there's something really important we need to know as well with subtraction, and that is the commutative law. Oh, what a horrible word. And once you learn this, you're definitely gonna be able to go and impress your teachers tomorrow. So what is the commutative law? Well, let's look at the word commutative and let's look at its root word, commute. Commute means to move, and that's exactly what it means here as well. So if we look at a question like this, let's go very basic, let's have a look at six plus four. We know that six plus four equals 10. But now if I commute or move these two numbers in my question and have four plus six, I also equal 10. So addition questions are what we call commutative. I can move the question around and have it six plus four or four plus six, and I still get the same answer. And that's the same with all addition questions. It doesn't matter which way around I put the question, I will end up with the same answer. However, let's have a look at this question. What is six minus four? we get two. But now let's commute the numbers, let's move those two numbers, and now let's have four subtract six. Do I also get two? No, I get a totally different answer. In this case, I actually get into the negatives. I have minus two. So therefore, subtraction is not commutative. Why is this so important? Well, we're gonna understand that a lot more as we go along. But just so we know, it's really important that we cannot move our question around. We have to do it in the order it's asking us. If it's six minus four, we have to answer six minus four. But if it's four minus six, we again have to answer four subtract six. What if I gave you 79.1 subtract 32.04? Dun, dun, dun. Okay, lots of things to look at in this question. The first thing I can notice is we now have decimals. That means I'm gonna to have to add some extra columns to my columns and make sure I put things in the right place. This is really important now. The second thing I notice is, again, I have some different amounts of digits. In my first number, I have 79.1, but in my second number, I have 32.04. So I have one number after the decimal in the first number and two numbers after the decimal in the second number. So I've gotta be really careful here and it's actually something really important that we need to think about. Okay, let's put our numbers into our place value chart. So I know I'm still gonna need my ones and tens, but now I need a decimal point and I need tenths. Tenths are what we call the next column across because they make 10 parts of one number. I need 10 of those just to get to one. And after that, we have hundreds. I need a hundred parts to get to one. Okay, so I have tenths and one hundreds. Now I can look at my number 79.1 and I can see I have one tenth. I can put back my decimal place. I have nine ones and seven tens. Okay, now I can look at my second number, but now I have a one hundredths. I have four one hundredths. So let's put my four in the one hundredths column and now I can see I have zero tenths. I'll put back my decimal. I have two ones and three tens. Okay, am I ready to begin? Not quite, because look, I have this gap again. And this time, this gap is super important. Let's think about why. If I was to answer this question and think about the smallest value, which would be one hundredths, and I try and answer it, if I don't have a placeholder there, I might just think this question says four, subtract nothing, because there's nothing there. But that would be wrong, because I still have to take this 100th away from something. And if there's nothing there above it, I need to put a placeholder there. If I don't, I'm gonna end up with a totally different number. So four would not be the right answer here, and this is the most common mistake that I see students make. So let's now put my placeholder in there and see if I get a different answer, let's see. So put my placeholder in, and now it says zero subtract four. 
OK, well, I have 0. Can I take away 4? No. Can I flip it around and just say 4 subtract 0 and put my 4 back? No. What do I have to do? I have to look next door. So I'm going to look into my tenths column and I'm going to notice that we have a 1, 1 tenth. So I'm going to take that 1 tenth, leave it with no tenths, and I'm going to put that 1 tenth over into my hundreds column, meaning that now I have a 10. OK, now let's see if I can answer it. 10 subtract 4 equals 6. Excellent, that's the right answer. Now I can look into my tenths column. I have a 0, subtract 0. Going to leave me with 0. And now I'm going to do another really important thing, and that's put my decimal point into my answer. Another really common mistake. Make sure you put your decimal in, otherwise your number's going to be totally different. So put my decimal point in. Now I look at my ones column, I can see I have 9 subtract 2, which is 7, 7 ones. And then in my tens column, I have 7 subtract 3, which is 4, 4 tens. Whoa, that was really long, leaving me an answer of 47.06. That was challenging, right? That is really, really tricky. If you can understand this and do this correctly, you are advanced year five students. So let's just think about a couple of things to remember there. The first and the most important is, if we have any gaps, we must fill them with placeholders. If we don't, we're gonna end up with a totally different answer. That's the first important thing. The second is, I must make sure I put my decimal point into my answer. OK, let's have a look at another question then, another hard stage three. OK, let's have a look at 81 subtract 36.51. Hmm, smaller numbers might be easier. Hmm, I don't think so. I think this is actually going to be even harder. Let's have a look. So the first thing I need to think about is setting up my columns. Well, I can see that I'm going to have ones and tens again, but also I can see that we're going to have tenths and one hundredths because of the 36.51. Okay, so I'm going to put my 81 in first because we know that's the number that we're going to take 36.51 away from. So 81 needs to go on top. So I have one, one, and eight tenths. Okay, now I can put my second number in, 36.51. So 36.51, I have six ones and I have three tens, but now I have five tenths and one one hundredth as well. OK, what do we notice? That's right, well done. We notice that we have two gaps. And can I just leave them? No, if I leave them, I'm going to get crazy different answers. So what do I need to put in these gaps? Placeholders. Awesome, OK, now I'm ready to start. Let's have a go. First column says 0 subtract 1. Hmm, can I do it? If I have 0, can I take 1 away? Not without getting into negatives. So what can I do? I'm going to look next door. But uh-oh, there's nothing next door. So what do I do? This is really confusing. OK, well, we now need to look next door again. And we can see that we have a 1 in the 1s column. So let's borrow it. Let's take it and put it into our tenths. So I'm going to take my 1 and I'm going to put it in my tenths. That now means I have 10 tenths. Great. Well, does that help us in the first column? Let's see, I have 10 tenths there. My first column still reads 0 subtract 1. Can I do it? No, still can't do it. But now I can look next door and see that I have 10. Ah, OK. So I have 10. Let's borrow 1, take that down to a 9, and move the 1 across into the hundredths column. So now I have 10 in my 100th column. Right, now let's see if we can begin. 10 subtract 1, can I do it? Yes, finally, equals 9. Let's move across to the tenths column. Now I have a 9, not a 10 or a 0. We have a 9. 9 tenths take away 5 tenths equals 4 tenths. At this point, I need to make sure I put my decimal point back, and now I can move into my ones column. My ones column says 0 subtract 6. Can I take 6 away from 0? Nope, not without going into negatives. So let's look next door again knock on the door and say, excuse me, can I borrow some of you? I'm going to borrow a whole 10 and put it into my ones column. So now in my tens column, I have a 7, but in my ones column, I have a 10. So now I can do it. 10 subtract 6 is 4. Look into my tens column for the final part. 7 subtract 3 is 4. Oh, 44.49. Wow, that is so difficult. That is really impressive if you understand that. 
Really well done, high five. So what have we learned from this question? We've learned that if we have two zeros next to each other on that top row, it can be pretty tricky because we have to keep looking until we have something next door that we can borrow from. And then we have to do it in mini stages. Really tricky. And what that does is it makes a question like this really difficult. Let's have a look at 1,000 subtract 999. Now we know the answer is one, but let's try and do it using this method. It's really difficult. Okay, so let's lay it out like we know how to do. In my 1,000, I have 0, 1, 0, 10, 0, 100, but 1,000. And then with my 999, I have 9 ones, 9 tens, and 9 100s. Don't forget my placeholder. Now I'm ready to start. Okay, so I'm going to start on my smallest column, my ones, and it says 0 subtract 9. Can I do it? No. So I need to look next door, but there's nothing next door. So he needs to look next door, but there's nothing next door. So he needs to look next door. Okay, so my hundreds can look into my thousands column and borrow that 1,000. So let's go back to my ones column. Can I do it yet? Zero, subtract nine. No, still can't do it. Look next door. Is there anything there yet? Not yet. Okay, so now the tens need to look into the hundreds column. Is there something there? Yes, okay, there's a 10. Now I can borrow one of those 100s turn that into a nine and have now a 100 in my tens column. Now let's see if I can do the ones column again. Zero subtract nine, can I do it? No, still can't do it. But now if I look next door, I can finally see something I can borrow. I have this 10. So I'm gonna borrow one from my tens column, bring a whole 10 across into my ones column. Whew, I think we're ready. Now let's have a look. Now my ones column reads 10 subtract nine, which equals one. Right, great. Look in my tens column, I have nine subtract nine, which is zero. Look in my hundreds column, I have nine subtract nine, which also equals zero. And look in my thousands column, I have zero subtract zero, which equals zero, which gives us our answer that we knew we should get one. Wow, guys, if you can get that right, you are a superstar. And that's as hard as stage three can get. If you can master that, you can get all of the subtraction questions that are gonna be thrown at you in year five. Really well done. Okay, I'm gonna put three questions on the board. These are stage three questions. These are the hardest questions that I'm gonna give you today. Good luck, press pause, have a go at answering them. If you get all these right, you are a legend and you have passed this video with absolute flying colors. Super job today, guys. Okay, I'm gonna put them on the screen. Here you go, good luck. Whoa, okay, if I'm seeing you now, it means you got all those questions right and you are a legend. Super job. I'm gonna say goodbye for now, guys. Hopefully today I've helped you. I'll see you in another video.